I haven't always been a passionate recycling queen, but I do what I can, you know. I always sort my plastics from my paper, my glass goes in one bin and my organics in another. She's lying. I mean, there's only one planet and we've each got to do our bit. I've even been known to collect my soft plastics, you know, the bags and stuff like that, and pop them down the recycling box at the supermarket. Sure you do. But, like, what's the point? Don't you read the news? Isn't it all just ending up in landfill? Well, no, well, on balance, it's important, even if the system is far from perfect. So what do we do? Well, there are things we have to remember. Not all recyclable items are the same. It's easier to recycle metal than plastic, for example. And sometimes the math just doesn't add up. You know, unfortunately, it can be cheaper and more efficient to make new products. So the industry needs to address this. But it is also on us. We need to consider our consumption. Just because it's recyclable doesn't mean you're off the hook. Once an item exists, it's important to try and keep it out of landfill. Oh, damn. I just wanted to throw my empty hard seltzer cans in the yellow bin and be done with it. Well, there's a reason that we say reduce, reuse, recycle, and not recycle, recycle, recycle. These are the Courtney facts. I'd say that Australians as a whole think we are pretty good at recycling. We've been diligently sorting our paper and plastic since the 80s and the 90s when different coloured bin lids became a staple on streets across the country. As the housewives and the children in the kitchen, they actually sort the material out and, and get in a very clean state so it's easily and cost effectively recycled. But while we might be recycling conscious on the curb, when the stuff gets on the truck, it's a different story. Yeah, I remember a few years ago, I read the local councils were sending our recycling to China and then they stopped accepting it. That's right. Earlier this year, China slammed its door on foreign waste and other countries are following suit. And recently we learned those plastic bags you dropped off at the supermarket were being stashed in warehouses. Yup. But we make so much waste. Why isn't recycling good business? Well, I wasn't really sure. So I asked Helen Millisa, sustainability expert and consultant who works with governments and businesses on this issue. There's a reason why recycling entities or companies struggle and why China decided to ban the import of our material. They're fairly simple. The economics doesn't stack up. It's more expensive to fix and recycle things than it is to make them new. She says not all recyclables are made equal. There are so many different types of plastics and they're not all compatible with one another. It's easy to separate aluminium for it to be melted down in a furnace, for it to be then put back into product again. Likewise with glass, but plastics, there are so many different types of plastics and you can't mix and match the same way. And that shows up in the data. Packaging industry estimates show we only recycle 16% of plastics. The recycling industry is small in this country too. I mean, that soft plastic recycler we mentioned, you know, where I took the bags to the supermarket and then they were being stored in a warehouse. Well, they were the only ones in the country offering that service. And we're only talking about the most obvious kinds of garbage so far. I mean, really, we should be considering everything here. Batteries, clothing, furniture, white goods, computers. But not all is lost. Despite a bit of a plastics problem, we're better with paper and cardboard with 68% recovered, 60% of glass and 81% of aluminium cans. So shame. We're still seeing your seltzer cans being used again. Oh, great, I can have my drink in peace. Well, not quite. That doesn't mean you can just consume guilt-free. Oh, really? I just told you we need to reduce, reuse, recycle. Our attitudes impact the amount of waste we produce. In fact, there's actually a chance recycling could even be making the problem worse. If you think about the way that you feel about throwing something in a bin that you think is going to landfill versus bin that you think might be taking your waste to some good home where people will do something good with it, you can imagine that you might feel quite differently about option A versus option B. Well, yeah, I do like to think my rubbish is going to a better place. Tim Kurz is a senior lecturer in the School of Psychological Science at the University of Western Australia. A few years ago, he conducted some experiments and found that people were 50% more likely to choose a single-use plastic bottle over normal glass if they were told the plastic would be recycled. So what our research confirmed then was that if people have available to them a recycling scheme where they feel like their waste is going to go to a good home as a result of them throwing it in a bin, they're actually much more likely to throw things away rather than reusing them. And they're also much more likely to choose a single use product rather than a reusable product to begin with. And what we found is that the reason why that happens is because people reframe the act of throwing something into the bin 
into a pro-environmental act rather than one that they should feel bad about. Right. But all of this brings me back to my original question, what's the point of it all? Well, the experts we spoke to all said it was still important it needs improvement. We can't survive on this planet without recycling. So it's important that we do far better than we do at the moment. And there's plenty of room for improvement with recycling and not just plastics, but all our products and materials as well. I think we are taking so much from our planet in terms of resources and materials that I think we, we owe it to, to our planet to be able to recycle, remanufacture and put these materials back into our system. Veena Saheshwala is the director of the Center for Sustainable Materials Research and Technology at UNSW. You know, if these kinds of materials are going to just be allowed to sit in our landfills, they're going to break down, they're going to produce microplastics that then leads to pollution. And things are improving over time. So for example, if I take batteries, uh, previously batteries were all thrown pretty much to landfill, which is why we've had landfill fires and those sorts of things. New programs have been established for the collection of these valuable products and the materials that they house. So now we have a battery stewardship program. Likewise, we can do so much more with everything from our vehicles, all our transport fleet, with our clothing, with our products such as our computers and televisions. So what am I meant to do while I wait for things to get better? Well, keep actively recycling, but consider your consumption too. According to a report from the Mindaroo Foundation, Australians make more plastic waste per person than anyone else in the world. Oh, about 60 kilograms a year. F we're looking at banning those, um, you know, single use plastics like those cutleries and straws. So I think absolutely there is room in there for that conversation that says when something is really unnecessary, um, why do we need to package three or two avocados, for example, in a little tray with all of that plastic around it? I mean, Mother Nature has created natural packaging around our fruit. Why do we need to actually unnecessarily um, have that excessive packaging. And the experts say we need to see this as more than just an issue about what to do with stuff once it's already in our house, but what decisions we're making before it gets there. Whilst people feel like actually all they need to be doing to fulfill their desires to be an environmentally friendly person, uh, is to throw their recycling in a recycling bin, well then that's kind of job done. And there's actually less, I guess, motivation for them to go and um, join pressure groups to try to stop supermarkets selling them stuff. Not that long ago, I was buying a pair of shoes and I opened up all that packaging in which the product came, took my shoes in my bag, and I had to return all of that excess packaging back to to the person at the counter going, look, I actually don't need all of this packaging. And so I think to me, you know, the more we start to look at how retailers, these businesses are going to take some of that responsibility back in their hands, I think to me that's going to be important. Because it feels like a lot of the guilt is placed on us as the consumer. Then it can't be our responsibility alone. The reality is that industry, businesses and governments must come together to make sure that what we receive into our market is right in the first place. And they haven't been doing that, unfortunately. And so in some weird way, Tim says these recycling failures could be a good thing. With something like the recent scandals that we've seen, um, in, in, in the media about people's plastic waste in particular not ending up in the places th that they had hoped that it would. Getting people to think about that and getting people to think about, well, where is my waste actually going when I put it in a recycling bin probably is a good thing. And if, if it leads them to become skeptical and critical of that, there is the possibility that it might get them to focus a bit more on the amount of waste that's coming into their household.